Hello my crafty friends, it's Beverly here over at Crafting Chaos and I'm here with um, the cupcake card, the shape card that I showed on the Facebook channels that I belong to and it comes in a few different parts to give you a few different looks. So what you will be aiming to get is the base card which is obviously the shape card including the score line. Then you've got the matting layer that will be the first layer on the card and I've actually added a greeting to this one. And then we've created a frosting layer that has some sprinkles cut out. And if you didn't want the sprinkles, you could have had um, just a plain frosting and add some glitter or whatever it is you would like to add. So these could be, you could put small um, colours of paper behind or paper piece of sprinkles back in to give them a mixed colour look. So that's what we're aiming for. So we'll leave this off to the side and we will get on with making the card. So I started off the process using this rounded square shape. Sorry, not that one, this one. So a square that has its edges rounded off. And I brought that onto the mat, and if we make it so we can get it where we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to go onto the properties box, which is the second one down the edit menu. And I'm going to select the shape, and I'm going to make a duplicate by right clicking and saying duplicate. And we're going to move that off to the side because we'll need that shortly. The next thing I'm going to do is I don't want the sides to be straight up and down like this. So what I actually did was I made it a little bit taller. And then I rotated it just a little way. So if you want the measurements that I've used, if you went to look here, 352, so we could make it 350, which would make it a nice even number to remember. So it's just been rotated 10 degrees to the left. <coughs> now, if we now take a duplicate of that, duplicate, and we're going to now come across and flip it on the horizontal axis. So we click that. And then we're going to line both shapes up so that we're getting that slanted side look. You can see that side's where it's going to be slanted. So I'm going to select both of those shapes and I'm going to line them up to the bottom. Okay, so that's where we're up to. Once you've done that, you can then weld. So now we're getting that sort of cupcakey shape there. Now, what I'm going to do now is use this piece to straighten off the bottom part of the cupcake, if you will. So I'm just going to place it where it's fitting inside the cupcake that we've already got. Like so, I'm just going to send the back, that back layer to the back so that we can click on the front layer, this one. And I'm going to make it a colour so you can see what I'm talking about. So what I'm doing is positioning that rectangle, the spare that we had over here, on the shape at the bottom. And I'm going to then select both. And I'm going to go to the edit menu and I'm going to line up at the bottom. Then I'm going to weld. So now we've got that cupcake shape which was made from just that rounded um, rectangle shape. So what we need to do now is work on making that cupcake top. So what I did was I brought on this basic circle shape and I'm going to close that down and I'm going to take a duplicate. So I'm going to right click and duplicate and move that off to the side. And all I'm going to do next is shrink this down and I'm going to position it on my cupcake where I'm going to start to make the frosting. So every cupcake that you do is going to be slightly different. So I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm just arranging them. I'm going to duplicate. So I'm making the first layer of frosting, if you, if you like, and duplicate. And then I'm going to take a duplicate of that little circle. And we're going to move in and we're going to start the next layer. Duplicate. And duplicate. Duplicate. And all I'm doing is moving them out so that the shape is becoming like that pleasing cupcake frosting shape that we know and love. Now for this top bit, all I did is duplicate it again, but this time I'm going to shrink it down slightly so that we get a smaller circle. Then I'm going to duplicate the smaller circle 
and position that one more time and into the middle. Now, so all I've done is used quite a few different circles to create that frosting, frosting layer. So I'm just going to arrange them, do, do little bits of an angling now to get them in the position where I like them. Once I'm happy, I'm going to select everything and I'm going to weld. So that's give us the basic cupcake shape. Okay. Now, if you're not quite happy or you want to move something, go to the undo. And I just wanted to move this one up a little bit. So I'm going to move that one in, that one up a bit, and this one up a bit, so that it's not quite as low down. And I'm just going to shrink it down a bit, because I think it's a little bit bigger on that side. So then I'm going to select everything again and weld. Now I'm much happier with the shape of that one. I'm going to take a duplicate, right click and duplicate, I've just used my... Um, shortcut that I've made for the Mac and what I'm going to do next is that's not a symmetrical shape so what that means is if I drew a line down the center it wouldn't be a mirror image on that side so what I need to do when I do a duplicate now is I'm going to take a duplicate now if I attach that one there the, the cord's not going to fold together as it should so what I need to do is I need to flip it on the horizontal axis so that I'm going to weld the two sides together that are identical so that when the card folds it's going to fit and I'm going to keep the spare so that we can have a matting layer on top so that it's not actually going to have that piece missing when you make the card. So I'm going to select both of those shapes, line up to the bottom, which is here on the edit menu, and I'm going to line up at the bottom. You could equally have done it at the top. It does the same thing. And now that I'm happy with the amount that they're overlapping, that's going to give me an area where I can score. You can increase it if you wish, or you can decrease it. It's entirely your, your call. But if you do move it, always just check that it is still level by hitting bottom or top then you're going to weld so basically now that's created the base card so the the base of your cupcake so what we need to do next is create a score line now i find the easiest way to do this now at the minute we've got a line there to go from so i'm going to snap to grid and then i'm going to Sorry, I explained that badly. Go down to the fourth icon onto the artboard and hit the snap to grid and leave it as is. Then click on the path tool. Now, when I click there, it's going to snap to that grid. And if I pull it down, I can release it and it's given me a straight line. If I now can move that up and down, but it's going to move it far because I've got it snap to grid. So what I'm going to do now is take it off the snap to grid and I'm just going to position it so that it's in between the top of the card and the, where the bottom of the fold will be. And I'm going to change it into a dotted line by you coming up here. And I'm going to select the line that I want and I want a dotted line. So that is going to be my fold line. If you wish, you can omit that step and put the score line in manually using your scoreboard and scoring tool. So now I'm going to select the base and the score line that we've just created and I'm going to say layer and group. Now that's effectively grouped our base card together so that now I can move it without fear of moving the score line. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the frosting. So I'm going to bring this spare. So this one is going to fit on top of that but at the moment it's in the wrong orientation if we try to fit that on there you can see how it's not symmetrical so what we need to do is go on the second icon down the edit and flip horizontal when you've done that it's now going to fit that shape perfectly when you get your matting layer for on top of your base card so i'm going to move the base card off to the side out of the way for now and I'm going to take another duplicate of this because we're going to need that maybe later. It's always better to have a working duplicate than you're not going to be stuck when it comes to the final sort of card, if you will. You've always got that spare. You can delete it if you don't need it. So next I'm going to bring on a square. And this is just what I'm going to use to cut this cupcake in half, if you will, or rather cut it 
where it's joining the frosting to the base of the cake if you will so I'm just going to position the square and take it across to that side now the square's on top because if I click on the shape you can see it's selecting the rectangle if it had selected the cupcake which is underneath then it wouldn't have let me so if I just show you how that looks if I send that one to the back now when I click on the cupcake on that part of the square it's actually selecting the cupcake and that's not what we want we definitely want the rectangle to be at the top so we're going to bring to the front so that's now at the front so then we're going to select both of those and we're going to go in process the overlap which is in the edit menu which is in the sec the second icon down on this right hand side and we're going to hit what not this one but this one at this far end which is called subtract and when you hover over the buttons you'll see it tells you what the function is weld divide remove overlap and subtract so I want to subtract the bottom part of that cupcake from the frosting and that's left us with just the frosting but we don't want the frosting to be too perfectly shaped like it is at the moment it wouldn't be sort of dead straight across there it would be more of sort of a uneven sort of edge like this one if you see what we've got on there so all you need to do is bring your circle in again and we're just going to position this and make duplicates and move it right along and make a, a row of uneven circles if you will which is just going to make us that look of the frosting dripping down onto the sides of the cake and I think we might be okay at that once you think you're happy with it give it a try select them all and weld and if you're happy with the shape of it leave it at that so now if we bring on our cupcake matting layer and we give that a color so we can see how it's going to look if we make it a nice pink color so it's nice pink icing that's going to fit our cupcake on the front and that's where we're going to have the cake on the bottom so this is now a chocolate cake if you will so now we've got this situation here where we've got and once you get the cupcake in exactly the right position it should cover up that like so so that's your cupcake frosting done so we'll move that layer off to the side and we're going to work on the sprinkles now to make the sprinkles I brought on this shape which I think looks a little bit like a plaster and I brought that on and I shrank it down so it was quite small like so it's a little bit smaller than that so I'm just going to reduce the size to about 0.5 keeping the aspect ratio um, no, I think it was a bit more, it might have been more like what 0.75 and that's more like it and I'm going to take a few duplicates of that so that we've got several to work with and all I did was just position them on the frosting like so and I'm making them, I'm just using this, if you look, if I zoom in there's a little handle here that like sticks up from the shape and it's circular that al allows you to rotate it if you click on it and turn with your mouse or your keys it's going to turn the shape and you can turn it clockwise or anti-clockwise alternatively you can do it by using the angle over in the edit menu so we're going to be positioning those onto the frosting we can always make more duplicates if we wish but this is how we're going to make the sprinkles, if you will, for the cupcake. So I'm just positioning them and I'm making them as random as possible and button so that they don't look too contrived, if you will. Um, but that's down to your own personal preference of how you do this. Or you could omit them all together. And I will include a plain layer in the, in the file that I'm going to put over on my blog when this video is released. Incidentally, my blog is over at Beverly, Beverly's Crafty Chaos, at blog, uh, Beverly's 
Crafty Case like Blogspot, if you put that into Google, it should find it for you. And if I can think on when I'm uploading the video to YouTube, I'll leave a link in the in the information box below the video. So I'm just moving the shapes and putting them into the position that I like. Now, um, there was a little bit of um, discussion about this file because for some reason when I put the the um, preview file up on the Facebook group that I belong to for some reason it, I don't know what I did or whether I clicked a button and I'm not sure what I did but it sort of made it into like a, it made it sound like I was trying to sell the file and, and, and I've no idea why it did that now, if you follow my channel and you follow my blog, you know I don't actually sell anything at all. I don't sell files. That's not what I'm, I'm doing this for. If you want the file, you can download it for free. Once my videos have been released, I release, um, I put them over on my blog and they're freely available for anyone to use. And I'm quite happy for you to go over there and download, download as many as you like or nothing. It's entirely your choice. But it's absolutely free and there's no obligations and no charge to do anything and i just hope that people enjoy and um, carry on supporting my channel so when you think you've got enough what we're going to do is take another duplicate so that if you wanted to you know that's going to be the exact same size as the sprinkles that are in your in your frosting so that then you could actually cut those instead of cutting them um, big pieces just to get the small ones you could actually cut the small pieces out of your scraps your coloured scraps to make the coloured sprinkles and they, they, that would save you paper I'm now going to make a duplicate just of I'll just take that back so I can explain it I'm selecting just the actual frosting and leaving the sprinkles and I'm going to make a duplicate and take that off to the side so that we've got a frosting that doesn't have the cut out sprinkles now all these sprinkles that we've got here are all on top i can see that because as i click them it's selecting the sprinkle rather than the shape behind so now if i select everything in that sprinkles and the frosting and come over to the edit menu which is the second icon down and we're going to process the overlap and simply subtract and what that does is punches out the holes. So what I was meaning with that is you could then make these any colour you wish and they would fit perfectly into the holes of like paper piecing if that's what you wanted to do. Alternatively, you could just cut small pieces of the paper out manually and if I just make this one, I'm going to just duplicate that before I change the, the size and shape just to explain. Or you could just cut yourself at pieces that are slightly bigger and send them stick them onto the back of your frosting which would give you the same effect whichever way you want to do it so that's how you create the frosting so if i just display and zoom to the mat size so that we can see where we're at so now we've got the layers that we need we've got our cupcake frosting we've got our cupcake front layer and we've got our base card and our sprinkle. So the only other thing that I'm going to show you now is, well, there's a couple of other things that I'm going to show you. So we're going to keep that sprinkle to one side so you can cut that by duplicating it, make as many copies as you want and cut as many as you want. So that's how we're looking now. So obviously, um, they're all brown at the moment because we've just got a brown piece underneath. So it depends what colours you put underneath as to what colour they would look. I then thought that the cupcake would look nice with a stitched border around the frosting. So what I, I we can do that now is taking the copy that we took that's exactly the same as this one, except it's got no sprinkles, which com would complicate making the stitch. So we're going to say, go to the edit menu, second icon down, right at the bottom it says offset. And that we want to go, a spacing of about 0.08, we want it to go inward, not outward. And we want to keep it round because our shape is rounded and we're going to say OK. So if I just repeat that, you've seen how it's created an offset, exactly the same shape as the main shape of the frosting but slightly 
set inwards from that. So we'll just repeat that. So we're clicking on the shape that we want to create the offset. Edit menu, which is the second icon down, down at the bottom offset, roughly about 0 0.08, inward, round, leave as is, and then say OK. And it will automatically select the shape that you've just created, which is the offset layer there. So then we can come up to the line pattern and choose a dotted line or a stitch line, a four stitch line, if you will. And we need to make that a drawing line. So now that's going to create that as a drawing line. So you would group those two together in a minute. I'm just going to take a duplicate just of the stitch line for a second. Then you would drink, group those two together. So layer and group. So now it would cut the frosting out and draw the stitch line. So you do this, put your pen or whatever it is, your marker, your, your um, pens, your gel pens, whatever into your pen holder and get it to do the four stitch line first in in my opinion that's the best way around to do it other people might suggest other you do whichever your kit you are comfortable with and then you'd cut it out afterwards and that would give you that little bit of extra detail on your frosting now the reason I took a duplicate of that is so that I can position this on the frosting that we've got on our cupcake which has got the sprinkles cut out and I'm just using the arrows to position it so that I think it's nice and even all the way around. Once we've done that, we can select both the pink frosting and the line and we're going to group, layer and group. So now we've got the sprinkles cut out and the four stitch line. So we're going to move this back into position. And the final thing I did was made the greeting which says you're so sweet. So I'm just going to move everything up to the top while we work on the greeting. Now for the greeting, if you click on the top icon, you'll see it brings up the properties box and it brings up the text and font and style, character spacing, etc. Now it will all be greyed out until you select the text box. Once you select that text box, it's going to become available to you. So you can either select it and then do it, or you can type your message and then look for a font that of your choice. I personally think it's easier to do the typing first and then select the font afterwards. So I just used the greeting, your so sweet, so and sweet and then clicked off and obviously that's done it in Antique Auckland which is selected but now that text is selected and we can look for a font that we think might look okay and try it out before we decide. So you could try one and it'll change it up in the box until you're happy with one and I'm just looking for the one that I used for this. Was it that one? And that, I think that's the one I used, which is InDesign Signature. Now, I'm not sure that whether that one is one that came with my Mac or one that I've downloaded, I'm not sure. But there are lots of scripty fonts available on the font. Many of them are completely license free and free, you're free to use them in any projects you wish. But I would always check the copyright details to make sure that you're not making any copyright infringements. Um, and check, check the license of the font that you're using is what I'm saying. So all I would did then is resize the font by selecting it and dragging it so it's shrinking down so that I could get it to fit on my cupcake. So you could have it like that so that it's just in a line or if you wanted it to be more like this one where you've got the your and then so sweet so we'll make a duplicate of that and then you've got both options available to you if you wish, if you're just downloading the file. But how you would break it up so that you get in this style is you go to the second icon down, which is the edit menu. And whilst it's selected, you need the second one in, which is divide. And that will divide all your letters up. So now I'm going to group them, but just as words by dragging a box, a mag this box blue box around by clicking and dragging around the your part of my um, greeting 
and then I'm going to layer and group. So now it's grouped the your, like so. And then I did the so sweet together. So I selected all of those together and grouped them. So now I could put this one, whoops, excuse me, I've got too much there. And I'm going to select it, drag it onto my cupcake here to see how it's looking. You can always adjust the size if you wish and make it a little bit larger. Your and then all I did to get this at the angle is again when you select it you get this little handle and I clicked it and rotated it at an angle and then I'm just trying to get the handle to move it and sometimes when you've done this it does get a bit tricky to get hold of it so if you zoom in a bit it's usually a little bit easier to get the cross hatch square to grab hold of it and drag it onto your project where you want it to be. So that's how you create the greeting. So if we move the frosting out of the way and, oops, not that out of the way, move the wrong thing, move the base card out of the way and the frosting out of the way so that we've just got the cupcake and we're going to display, zoom, fit to mat. So there's our little sprinkle for our paper piece and if you want to do that, there's our plain frosting, there's our cut out frosting, there's our base card, here's one format for the greeting where it's straight and here I'm just going to move that cupcake out of the way so I can select these I'm going to group those now so that that is now a grouped whoops sorry I didn't mean to do that this is now should be a grouped file that we can move as one so if we move the cupcake back on and move this back on that's how that would that one would look and if we put this the frosting on that's how it would look when the card was closed now obviously with these you can pretty them up with your glitters and what have you to make them look um a bit more fancy but once you've got that positioned in the right place so that you're not showing any of the card underneath you may need to slightly then adjust where you've got your text because if I have it where I am now I'm going to be having the text underneath where the frosting is when it's everything stuck down so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the text layer which is going to be one of the groups because I've grouped it so I'm just going to click on the groups in the layers palette which is the third icon down until at there I hit the one that is actually selecting the group of letters that make up the, the sentiment your so sweet and I'm just going to use my down arrow key on my keyboard to scoot that down so now I know oops I've just gone a little bit too far that looks about right so now I know that if I do the drawing first your so sweet on that layer and then cut that layer when I come to cut out the frosting layer, it's going to fit perfectly. Alternatively, you could use the straight one. Just position that on your cupcake at the bottom and you could have a straight layer. Okay. So, if I could display fit to mat. So we're going to take the size of the mat down, not quite so much. So we've got all the parts we need for our file now. So we've got, so if I keep the other one, the old one separate, so we've got both of our frostings, one with and one without the frost, the um, sprinkles cut out. We've got two examples of the greeting and the card at the minute is just a little bit big because it's going to struggle to fit on a 12 by 12 going across. So you're going to select everything, so everything including the little sprinkle and everything and we're going to layer and group and then we're just going to resize by dragging in from one of the corners and that will um, shrink everything proportionally. So everything is still going to fit perfectly. When you've done that, you can then layer and, sorry, it's got to be selected, layer and ungroup 
make sure you do that before you send it over to your cutting machines or it's going to have a problem you won't be able to ungroup it once you get it over to your machine so that's the file now so if we look at the size of the card it's going to be 11.22 width so roughly about five and a half inches wide by six inches six and a bit inches tall so that would be your card okay all right so i hope you've enjoyed the tutorial there are lots and lots of things that you can make just from using the basic machines that are the, sorry the basic shapes that are in the scan and cuts actual library because you do get quite a lot of basic shapes and if you if you look at objects and you just think what the shapes are at what how the shapes are actually put together there are there is actually like really quite a lot of things you can just make from the onboard shapes so, I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. If you have, please like, share and subscribe. Head over to my YouTube channel to watch other videos that you might be interested in. There's lots of videos on there showing you lots and lots of different techniques from full stitching to mats and layers to infilling your text with a different pattern if you so desired. So, that's it for now. Please remember to tell your friends where to find me and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.